Today, we have our guest, Pashonda Pugh, licensed professional counselor, here on The Conversation. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Conversation. I am your host, Patrice Reynolds. I am missing my co-host today, April Garner. April is on vacation, but April will be back. Today, in April's stead, I have Tiffany Hollis. Tiffany Hollis is a friend that I met on social media. Hearing about all her accolades and all her promotional congratulations and all of that, I, I reached out to her to congratulate her and I really didn't know who she was, but I was very proud of her. Um, we became friends on social media and here she is. So this is Tiffany Hollis, everybody. Tiffany, tell them about yourself. Well, um, I am a professor at Costa Carolina University. I teach in Spadoni College of Education. Woohoo! if you're an Woo! educator, you rock. No offense to anyone else, but uh, I'm a little biased there. Um, so. <laughs> I moved here from Charlotte, North Carolina. I am a former resident of Gaffney, South Carolina. Anybody know where the peach is? All right, Gaffney. <laughs> so being from Gaffney, I am in a, like a small percentage of people with doctorates from Gaffney. So Dr. Tiffany Hollis oh, wow. uh, is the title they gave me, right? And um, on a, a daily basis, I kind of try to live up to that title in terms yeah. of not just what I do in the classroom, but what I do in the community and what I do with the students on campus. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things that I do is um, I work with a group of young ladies called the Women of Color Group on campus at Coastal Carolina University, of course. And we meet on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Um, and we meet and talk about a lot of different topics. It's kind of like a space, a refuge, a place of solace for the young ladies, particularly now with what, everything that's going on with the pandemics. How are you guys meeting with the pandemic? Are you still meeting in person or is it Zoom? We're meeting via Zoom. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of students, if they're on campus or mm -hmm. if they're around, then we do try to meet up socially distanced mm -hmm. um, in the Intercultural Inclusion Student Services Office on campus. What other things do you deal with specifically with the women of color? So we do a segment on Wednesday, it's called Wellness Wednesday, where the young ladies come in and we talk about different issues. We mm -hmm. do grounding techniques, breathing techniques, mindfulness, meditation. We partner with um, Dr. Angel Only Livingston, who is our Director of Counseling Services on mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. And working with um, Mrs. Um, Only Livingston has been awesome. Work with she worked with her and Lashia Bowers, who also just started, just joined the group as well. Mm -hmm. And again, they just come in and do some great work with the young ladies and help them to just focus and stay grounded and to pay more attention to their mental health and their mental wellness. Nice. And mental, mental health being so extremely, extremely trending right now and so important. Mm -hmm. um, today on The Conversation, we will be talking about mental health. I've gotten so many people, you know, sending messages on topics that we would, you know, they would like for us to talk about. And mental health was one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's also something that I've wanted to talk about also. Um, on today's show, we have experts in uh, mental health. Her name is Pashonda Pugh. And you need to know that name. She's a licensed counselor regarding um, a lot dealing with mental health. And before we go to commercial, we're just going to try to stick in there a couple stats about mental health, if we can. Mm -hmm, of course. So of course, now with everything going on, you have coronavirus, you have racial unrest, you have um, economic uncertainty, a lot of different things going on, and anxiety, depression, other areas of mental health Definitely. are certainly heightened. Yes. Um, so some of the stats, even from 2020, are that in late June, 40% of U.S. adults reported having a mental health or substance abuse. Um, one in six youth aged 6 to 17 experience mental health disorder. Suicide is the second leading cause of death here in the United States, particularly among people um, ages 10 through 34. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to think about the youth in juvenile justice um, system. 70% of those youth are suffering from a mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, our transgender um, family and friends 
are nearly 12 times more likely to attempt suicide than the general population. And the most common mental illnesses in the U.S. are anxiety disorders, which affect about 40 million adults. Wow. All right, guys, we got, we got some work ahead of us here today, and um, we're going to inform you uh, of some things that you might not have known about mental health. We'll be right back. We're going to go and support some local businesses. comes a time to heed a certain call to serve others. In 2008, Barbara Black responded to the needs of her community with her nonprofit organization, Lydia's Nest. Now through a newfound partnership with Tanisha Clements, Lydia's Nest has opened. Lydia is a resources and development center to serve communities in Johnsonville, South Carolina. The new center focuses on health, wellness, and education. When you're in need, trust Lydia's Nest to take heed. Lydia's Resources and Development Center. Theater, art, music, culture, The Long Monday. Welcome to The Production Warehouse. The Production Warehouse is a premier live stream soundstage studio conveniently located in the heart of Myrtle Beach. We stage, film, and broadcast multiple types of shows. We utilize area professionals and resources necessary to ensure that we render the best service possible. For all of your production needs, please contact us at 843-267-3818 or visit us at theproductionwarehouse.com. Hey guys, I'm Coria Burns, also known as C Burns on air. Online, you can find me at Just Coria. I'm the creator of the Faith Board. It is a faith-based twist on a vision board. I'm also the author of Pray, Plan, Execute, Fail-Proof Goals in Five Easy Steps. You can get this book on Amazon or on PrayPlanExecuteJournal.com. And we are back on the conversation. I want to thank you guys for watching. It is extremely important and, you know, uh, important, you know, that you guys watch the show. We appreciate you. Today's topic is on mental health. Mental health has been buzzing everywhere. The trend is high. People are talking about it. Even celebrities are dealing with it. Um, and that's for some reason when celebrities deal with stuff and get people's attention even more. Mm -hmm. But anyway, however it gets your attention, that, that's, it doesn't matter. The subject is extremely important. And speaking of conversations, I could have a conversation with these two young, uh, young ladies all day. Yeah. But I want you to meet our <laughs> guest for today. Ms. Pashonda Pugh, who is a licensed professional counselor here in Conway. Yes. Yes, we have her in studio. Hello, and thank you for having me. Oh, definitely, definitely. We appreciate you taking the time out and being with us today. I know that um, being in your profession, you deal with a lot mm -hmm. of mental health situations or self-esteem situations. And I am so, so curious as to how, you know, counselors deal with that, you mm -hmm. know, this day and time. Um, I don't know. Well, tell us a little about yourself before we start, because, boy, we got a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> well, my name is Pashonda Pugh. I am a licensed professional counselor. I'm nationally certified and I'm certified licensed to work in both North and South Carolina. Okay. Um, I started out actually in education. So, mm -hmm. you know, coastal, I'm a coastal alum and oh, wow. yeah, so okay. um, I honestly got into the counseling profession after being a teacher and being a classroom teacher and going through the changes and the adjustments of working in the profession yeah. and deciding to change and walking away from what I thought I was supposed to be. Uh -huh. And so at that point in time, I experienced what I now know was a, my first um, depressive episode. And of course, being in African-American community, mm -hmm. I thought at the time, the only thing I had to do was go to church. Yep. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, um, you know, counseling wasn't yeah. approachable. It wasn't anything that I could actually go to. Yeah. So I got into the, this actual profession seeking help for myself. 
That's a, that's that's a, a, a that's an awesome story. Mm -hmm. I have to say that um, for you to get to a place in your life where it was purposed, mm -hmm. you know, it had to happen to you first. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, to take all of that and create what you've created, uh, you know, is very inspiring. Okay. I have to say. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get down mm -hmm. to it. So you you kind of answered my question. Mm -hmm. My first question, I was going to ask you who or what motivated you to go into oh, yeah. the mental health field and yeah. into the counseling field? Well, um, like I was saying before, as far as mental health goes, especially in the African American community, especially in the South, it is not necessarily as a kind of a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. And so at the point in time where I was seeking help, and this was still in the early 2000s, I didn't feel like I could actually go and find a counselor. I thought, mm -hmm. that, that, I thought that it was above and beyond what was available to me. Yeah, you know, yeah. counseling seemed like it was something that was outside of my ability. Yeah, and, you know, not enough money, not enough um, exposure to where actually I could get help from. Yeah. So because I was good at school, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I can go to school. Mm -hmm. I can learn how to be a, a therapist. Yeah. I can counsel myself. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, volunteer in front of my yeah. professors and get free counseling. Now it's not me asking for help. Yeah. It's me learning the, about the subject and fixing it myself. Yeah. And just to make it clear, guys, in the black church, mm -hmm. we are taught that um, when you have mental health, it is an evil spirit. It's a spirit. Pray about it. That, yeah. Mm. It's a spirit that you have to cast out and um, fast and pray and, you know, um, restrain yourself and, you know, that sort of thing. So that's what we grew up with. Mm -hmm. So we have been dealing with our own mm -hmm. issues ourselves mm -hmm. you know and of course being ashamed you know if you have an issue and so and so ran down the street with no clothes on you hear those stories from your ancestors and so and so mm -hmm. and now we know ah oh, they had an issue they had mm -hmm. you know mental illness and uh, oh my gosh a whole nother show as far as the black community and where it stems mm -hmm. from but for now let's just get down to the bolts and nuts. Of I wanted to say thing. something. Though. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. said uh, how we are taught to pray, oh, P-R-A-Y, yeah. but I used to tell my, my grandparents, uh, how can we pray when there are so many, many things P-R-E-Y-ing, mm. praying on us, right? And so I want to talk more with you, Vashonda. What do you think, um, so share with us some examples of some of the things you've witnessed um, when it comes to mental health, particularly in the black community. Yeah. Well, what I've noticed is that um, mental health issues is a lot more common than most people realize. Um, we all, regardless of race, you know, experience mental health out, um, problems and situations, and we just actually have been taught to just verbalize it and explain, explain it in a different context. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we use the word stress. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just having a down day, and that's what it is. But every, all of those things are true until we actually go through the process of it starts to interfere with our daily living and our daily lives. So what I see a lot of in the African American community is we have a lot of people who are going under a whole lot of stressors and are just handling it and dealing with it the best way we know how, which usually sometimes what we've been trained to do mm -hmm. usually ends up creating a whole nother problem, yeah. which brings in the drug and alcohol parts of our mental health issues. So that's one of the things that I see a lot of is people just kind of, we, we downplay it and we explain it away, but we never really address it. Wow. That's a sad situation. I actually, as you are speaking, I'm thinking of people in my family mm -hmm. that um, that matches so well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and if there's a vice there, then that vice is used um, until they get to the root mm -hmm. of that issue. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's pretty powerful. Okay, what are your views? of norm, normal, normalizing mental health in the black community. How do you think we should approach that? Well, I am, of course, as a licensed professional counselor, I'm an advocate for mental health. Okay. I believe that we everyone needs a therapist. Yeah. You know, is it, you, need, you need a Pashonda in your life. Yeah. Everybody yeah. needs somebody yeah. that they can come to and they can actually help process and understand what's going on with them and yeah. how the struggles that they're facing. Okay. Um, a lot of times what I'm actually witnessing is, you know, just being able to talk to people okay. and make it approachable and make them feel comfortable in sharing their stories and sharing what they have going on. Wow. 
Okay. Well, guys, we have much more to talk about, but before we continue, we're just going to take another commercial and support some businesses. Hey, and by the way, that one of those businesses could be you. Go to our Facebook page and message us about sending a commercial for your business. We'll be right back. There comes a time to heed a certain call to serve others. In 2008, Barbara Black responded to the needs of her community with her nonprofit organization, Lydia's Nest. Now through a newfound partnership with Tanisha Clements, Lydia's Nest has opened. Lydia is a resources and development center to serve communities in Johnsonville, South Carolina. The new center focuses on health, wellness, and education. When you're in need, trust Lydia's Nest to take heed. Lydia's Resources and Development Center. Theater, art, music, culture, The Long Monday. Welcome to The Production Warehouse. The Production Warehouse is a premier live stream soundstage studio conveniently located in the heart of Myrtle Beach. We stage, film, and broadcast multiple types of shows. We utilize area professionals and resources necessary to ensure that we render the best service possible. For all of your production needs, please contact us at 843-267-3818 or visit us at theproductionwarehouse.com. Hey guys, I'm Coria Burns, also known as C Burns on air. Online, you can find me at Just Coria. I'm the creator of the Faith Board. It is a faith-based twist on a vision board. I'm also the author of Pray, Plan, Execute, Fail-Proof Goals in Five Easy Steps. You can get this book on Amazon or on PrayPlanExecuteJournal.com. Hello and welcome back to The Conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today we are talking about mental health um, and how important it is and, and, and how the, the ins and outs of, of how to be healed and how to get some help. Today on the show we have professional license, licensed professional Pashan Pew here today. I have a question for you. What do you think are barriers of mental health care in the black community? Um, one of the biggest barriers is lack of information. Um, a lot of people do not realize that you can actually afford to go and get mental health care. That doesn't mean that you have to go to the mental health facility. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, in this area would be welcome on mental health. Yeah. And because it is a big facility, a lot of people still have the stigma and fear of being seen. Mm -hmm. Or you end up getting into positions where, you know, it might be a little bit more time consuming to get in. Mm -hmm. So you can actually utilize any licensed professional counselor, okay. facility or agency here in the area, mm -hmm. and your insurance will more than likely pay for it. So you don't have to worry about a huge out-of-pocket expense. Oh, wow. So all those times we've been hearing, I need a mental day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really real. Yes. It's a, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. And there's also several programs that are available for people who sometimes your insurance, um, you know, the out-of-pocket expense might be a little bit high. Yes. But there's a program called Open Path, the Open Path Collective, that actually provides um, very reduced rate uh, mental health services for people. And it has those situations where they're not... Um, you don't have to worry about having a high out-of-pocket expense. Oh, wow, that's good to know. It is good to know, some good information. Um, so speaking of information, what advice um, would you provide to people? You've just given some great advice, but what advice would you provide to people, particularly people of color, as they deal with multiple pandemics, the coronavirus, the social unrest, the economic uncertainty, the racial reckoning, all the different things that are taking place right now in society? Um, the most important thing is to not be afraid to ask for help. Um, a lot of people mm -hmm. need it, they want it, but they're afraid to say that they need help. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to ask. It's okay to reach out to others, especially during this time of social distance and especially during the time where a lot of us are more isolated than what we're used to. Mm -hmm. Actually reach out. There are several ways to reach out via um, virtually. You can actually have your therapy virtually. You don't have to worry about going into an office. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several websites and programs that are available that if you don't 
I mean, for the younger generation who doesn't like talking, mm -hmm. they can text and they can actually interact with a therapist via text messages. So there are several options mm -hmm. available, but the biggest thing is to not be afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's definitely okay to not be okay. Is that yeah. what you would Always. say? Mm -hmm. Always. So what would you say is the most prominent mental health um, issue or concern at the present moment? One of the biggest um, issues that we are having is anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, most of us suffer from anxiety and depression and don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. um, if you have racing thoughts, if you're having trouble sleeping, mm -hmm. if you're planning your conversations before you have them with people, that's a sign of anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. worrying about what you're saying and what you're doing. And a lot of times we go back and we interplay what's going on around us. Yes. And it, it plagues us. And we're taught that that's supposed to happen, especially wow. when you are, with what you're working with, with uh, students in academic life, the overachievers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the kid, those kids who actually go to school and do get good grades, we are taught that this is supposed to happen, mm -hmm. that we're supposed to be stressed, that we're supposed to be under this pressure. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to be under that amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, we cover our sadness with alcohol, drugs, now marijuana. You know, we deal with those things with outside sources. Mm -hmm. And as we look at it it's every day, this is what everybody is going through. Everybody has these problems. We don't have the right to feel that, you know, this is hard. Not true, mm. not true. We have to be wow. able to ask for help and realize that it's okay to not be okay. And mm -hmm. a lot of us, we really do need help. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting to the root of that anxiety and that issue, mm -hmm. A lot of us will will cover mask. it with mm -hmm. yeah. We mask it. We we are, we, are, wow. we are taught to laugh it off. We make mm -hmm. fun about it, and we are silently suffering. Mm -hmm. You know that's why the suicide rates are so high because so many of us are silently su suffering. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the children now, you know I get a lot of kids into my practice because you know they are in need. Mm -hmm. They are hurting. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the parents don't realize it. You know the cutting that happens. Mm -hmm. The um, the suicidal ideations and different things that happen, all those things go unaddressed, mm -hmm. you know, and because of the shame that comes with it, because parents feel like that means something is wrong with my parenting. Mm -hmm. I've done something wrong. I'm to blame. The people around us, we, you know, they make fun of it. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have you been worried about something or you have bad days and people say, oh, you're so bipolar. Mm -hmm. That really is not what bipolar is, but mm -hmm. people will use mm -hmm. that term really right. loosely yep. to make fun and make jokes about the situation. And they're not understanding that what they're doing is actually creating more of a stigma and making it harder for people to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. So when we don't deal with it, it comes back. Mm -hmm. It will continue to come back until you deal with the root of the issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, from someone myself who suffers from anxiety and depression, like now I feel normal. Mm -hmm. Because these were things I was going through before yeah. the pandemics hit. Um, and one of the things that I did in order to help me cope mm -hmm. was um, I joined a group of young of other professors, females of, of color, yes. and we and we do what's called black mental black women's mental wealth. Mm -hmm. And so oh. we focus on the mental health we focus at it from a perspective of cultivating joy, yes. happiness, and truly taking that time to cope and to say, this is what's wrong with me, I need to address it. Mm -hmm. I talked to my therapist today, like knowing that it's okay mm -hmm. to have a, a, a therapist yeah. Yeah. and knowing that it's okay to deal with those issues. So you can't deal with what you don't confront, exactly. right? And that's something that we all talk about in that group and that's why now that I'm doing that, I'm able to do it with the women of color that I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. because I can't help them heal if I myself am not yeah. addressing or confronting the issues that are um, in front of me. Wow. Having that support system is really beneficial. Mm -hmm. So because the more that you're around other people who are talking about the situations and the struggles that they have, the more you realize, okay, I'm not by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. That's where therapy does come into play. Being able to have someone to speak to, to that can let you know that what you're feeling is normal. Wow. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. These are not isolated you know, incidences that are happening just to you. Yeah. Like All of us are suffering. Yeah. All of us experience ups and downs. It's a part of human nature, but it's also us having to realize and understand how to go about being able to be healthy okay. and be mm -hmm. whole. And there's no shame in it. There's yeah. no shame in asking for help. Lashonda, let us know where you are and how people can reach you, um, what sites you have up possibly. Um, I am located downtown Conway on Main Street, actually, right above Papa General Store in, okay. in the heart of Conway. Mm -hmm. um, but I can be reached um, online. Mm -hmm. You can reach my website. Um, my office is Life Transitions Wellness Center. 
Life you transitions. Know? Yes. Okay. I use life transitions because that is something that we all go through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the changes and the ups and downs, it's what everybody experiences. So you do virtual? Yes. Okay. Especially during this time frame for my safety, the safety of the others yes. to get help. Virtual is actually benefit because yes. mm -hmm. you can be in the safety of your own home mm -hmm. and be able to talk to someone and not have to worry about getting dressed, parking, traveling. Mm -hmm. There's really no excuse why you can't find help and get the assistance that you need right now. Definitely. So just be willing to reach out. Yeah. There comes a time to heed a certain call to serve others. In 2008, Barbara Black responded to the needs of her community with her nonprofit organization, Lydia's Nest. Now through a newfound partnership with Tanisha Clements, Lydia's Nest has opened. Lydia is a resources and development center to serve communities in Johnsonville, South Carolina. The new center focuses on health, wellness, and education. When you're in need, trust Lydia's Nest to take heed. Lydia's Resources and Development Center. Theater, art, music, culture. The Long Monday. Welcome to the Production Warehouse. The Production Warehouse is a premier live stream soundstage studio conveniently located in the heart of Myrtle Beach. We stage, film, and broadcast multiple types of shows. We utilize area professionals and resources necessary to ensure that we render the best service possible. For all of your production needs, please contact us at 843-267-3818 or visit us at theproductionwarehouse.com. Hey guys, I'm Coria Burns, also known as C Burns on air. Online, you can find me at Just Coria. I'm the creator of the Faith Board. It is a faith-based twist on a vision board. I'm also the author of Pray, Plan, Execute, Fail-Proof Goals in Five Easy Steps. You can get this book on Amazon or on PrayPlanExecuteJournal.com. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to the conversation today. We are on every third Wednesday at 1230. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are also on Facebook. You got any last words, Tiffany? Just saying thank you for joining us at the conversation and allowing us to be a part of the conversation, allowing you to be a part of the conversation. But mental health is mental wealth. So don't forget to take care of yourself. Thank you for joining us on the conversation. I will be this caught up. Oh. I said you really, really done it to me. You got my mind all wrapped up in your love, and I, uh, I can't let you go. Uh, uh, I don't know where I'd go. Uh, uh, you got my mind, and so this never ever happens to me. Uh, I'm so into you, I wouldn't, wouldn't know what to do if I, uh, I couldn't be with you. Tell me what you want me to do.